right friends welcome back to snt health and environment we are going to deliberate on multi drug resistant tb and extensively drug resistant tb and before going into it you should know what is meant by tuberculosis tuberculosis is an infectious disease caused by bacterium called mycobacterium tuberculosis so because of bacteria this tuberculosis is caused and it can affect the several organs of the body such as the brain kidneys and the bones but most commonly it affects the lungs when it affects the lungs a specific name is there that is pulmonary tuberculosis and if you look at the global tuberculosis report 2015 released by world health organization 9.6 million people fell ill with uh, tuberculosis in 2014 out of which 1.2 million are hiv patients because their immune system will be lost for the patients with uh, hiv infections their body cannot resist the infections that's why hiv infected people are most vulnerable as far as tb is concerned then in 2014 1.5 million people died of tb which include 0.4 million suffering from hiv the tuberculosis death rate decreased 47% since 1990 and most of the improvement took place since 2000 between 2000 and 2014 43 million lives were saved through effective diagnosis and treatment and globally success rate of people newly diagnosed with tuberculosis was 86% in 2013 and in 2014 480000 people developed multi drug resistant tuberculosis and there were an estimated 190000 deaths from multi drug resistant tuberculosis and who are the vulnerable groups to contract tuberculosis tuberculosis can be contracted by patients suffering from hiv then injecting drug users economically poor and vulnerable population because of uh, poor nutrition standards or you can say malnutrition then chronic alcoholics because their resistance will be reduced people with malnutrition and poor nutrition then people living in poorly ventilated areas such as the slums the workplaces with the substandard living or working conditions and overall chronic poverty is the main reason for contracting this infectious disease and there is a difference between infection and disease infection is the first stage and second stage is a disease and infection may not result in disease in several cases infection is the first stage body's immune system will resist that disease and in case of aids patients the immune system will be lost that's why it will not resist the infection and it will ultimately result in disease only few germs will stay in the lungs in infection stage and they do not multiply and it does not result in a sickness and tb germs cannot be passed on to others so tb infection need not necessarily lead to tb disease and tb infection is not that dangerous and some people may live throughout life without infection resulting into disease and tb disease is the second stage when the immune system fails tb germs will multiply and the tb germs will move to other parts of the body and they start damaging the organs it results in sickness and unfortunate aspect is these tb germs can be passed on to others so tb infection is not dangerous but tb disease is too dangerous and unfortunate aspect is these germs can be passed on to others and other points tb germs spread through lymph nodes and blood stream to any organ in the body lymph nodes are there everywhere in our body 
and they are part of a lymphatic system whenever there is infection in the body the inflammation of lymph nodes will occur when you go to the doctor doctor will check for inflammation of lymph nodes only to check whether infection is there in the body or not when you come back to this tuberculosis so most often it is found in lungs and as i have already told you bacteria can live in inactive form for several years if the immune system weakens such as in groups like hiv alcoholics then injected drug users elderly adults it can become active and subsequently it can cause death in tissue of organs they infect and it is a contagious disease contagious disease means it spreads from one person to other person and infection is most likely to occur if someone is exposed to the tb patients on day to day basis right and we have to look at the aspect how tb spreads and how it does not spread how tb spreads tuberculosis spreads when a person who is infected with the disease coughs sneezes or laughs then these tuberculosis germs are passed through the air and infects other person and if one is exposed to someone with the tuberculosis on day to day basis then also this germs will spread and how it does not spread latent infections will not spread if infection has not developed into disease as we have already discussed during the first stage it will not spread then through quick or casual contact like passing someone on the street it will not spread by sharing food or utensils it will not spread by shaking hands it will not spread by using public telephones it will not spread so how it spreads how it does not spread we have learned and if you look at the symptoms of tuberculosis cough is the primary symptom sometimes cough with the blood then chest pain fever tiredness no hunger then night sweats then chills these are all the features or symptoms of tuberculosis and how the disease is treated there are two aspects in disease treatment one is aim of the treatment what is the main aim of the treatment there are four points i have listed here one is to cure the patient of tuberculosis and restore their quality of life and productivity second important point is to prevent the relapse of tuberculosis relapse means the recurrence of tuberculosis then third one is to reduce the transmission of tuberculosis to others then fourth one is to prevent the development and transmission of drug resistant tb if the tuberculosis is not treated properly it will result into drug resistant tb and that situation also should be avoided so these four are the main features if you look at the treatment and how it is cured the treatment basically involves killing the bacteria killing the tuberculosis bacteria in the person's body tuberculosis bacteria die very slowly hence medicines are required for few months normal treatment is 6 uh, months and the first line of drugs include isoniazid uh, rifampicin and combination of drugs are also used sometimes to prevent uh, relapse or recurrence right and this is the methodology of treating this tuberculosis so the aim of the treatment is to avoid spreading to others not only that uh, to prevent it to become drug resistant tb and also to prevent relapse of tb and medication is required at least for 6 months to cure this disease basically to kill tb bacteria and next important point why this normal tuberculosis turns into multi drug resistant tb or extensively drug resistant tb this mdr tb is a multi drug resistant tb it is the tb that does not respond to at least the two powerful anti tb drugs two powerful anti tuberculosis drugs are isoniazid and rifampicin and this multi drug resistant tb will not respond to these powerful anti tb drugs then extensively drug resistant tb 
this is a serious form of uh, multi drug resistant tb with additional resistance to some more anti tb drugs so this mdr tb and xdr tb both are posing challenge to the medical fraternity and this is the biggest problem world is facing today and these two are reported in several countries across the world and in 2014 alone worldwide 4 lakh 80 thousand people developed mdr tb and 9.7 percent roughly 10 percent of these cases are extensively drug resistant tb and the treatment and medication for this extensive drug resistant tb is highly difficult and the survival chances will also reduce once people contracts this extensively drug resistant tb and why this normal tuberculosis turns into mdr tb and xdr tb when people do not take their tuberculosis medicines regularly or leave in between some people if the medication is for 6 months some people use for 2 months or 1 month and they will leave the medicines and subsequently the tuberculosis may develop into multi drug resistant tb or extensively drug resistant tb then when people do not take all the combination drugs as prescribed by the doctor then when a person spent some time with someone known to have mdr tb or xdr tb and sometimes relapse of tb that means tb once cured if it relapses sometimes may result into mdr tb or xdr tb then the spread of the disease is also due to migration of people from areas of the world where drug resistant tb is common so these are the reasons why this normal tuberculosis turns into mdr tb and xdr tb and mdr tb the recommended test is a nucleic acid amplification test by expert mtbr rifsa is the standard one and it uses a disposable cartridge with the gen expert instrument system and it simultaneously detects mycobacterium tuberculosis complex and resistance to rifampicin in less than 2 hours and what is the medication medication is bedoxvilin that is the recommended drug for multi drug resistant tb and care is to be taken when it is used in elderly persons pregnant women persons with hiv whoever are taking antiretroviral medication and it is also reported that it disturbs the functioning of the heart and the liver and it interacts with some other drugs right so countries should take proper care in treating the tuberculosis patients by keeping a watch and it becomes highly difficult in countries like india where ignorance levels are very high hence transformation from this tuberculosis into mdr tb and xdr tb is becoming quite common phenomena in underdeveloped countries and developing countries because of a lack of proper education and because of lack of awareness right and what action was taken by india in india on world tuberculosis day india launched bedoxvilin and bedoxvilin is introduced at the six identified tertiary care centers in india and at the same time 500 cartridge based nucleic acid amplification test machines were introduced into the revised national tb control program so these are the steps taken by india in recent times and finally what to do to prevent the spread of mdr tb and xdr tb first one is by taking all the medicines exactly as prescribed by the doctor second one is no dose should be missed and treatment should not be stopped early third one is if patients want to travel they should talk to their doctor before making a travel plan then doctors can help prevent mdr tb by monitoring patients response to treatment then avoiding exposure to mdr tb patients in closed or crowded places such as hospitals prisons or market places then using personal respiratory protective devices wherever needed this is quite relevant for medical professionals and to the persons whoever are coming in contact with mdr tb and xdr tb patients 
right and basic thing to prevent this MDRTB and XDRTB is to increase the awareness levels of the population especially in underdeveloped countries and developing countries. Right friends with this let us conclude this MDRTB and XDRTB have a nice day thank you.